Well, hello, writers. Welcome to episode number 278 of How Do You Write? I'm Rachel Heron, and I'm so pleased that you're here with me today as I talk to the amazing and wonderful Eva Moore. Let me give you a little introduction for her. Um, we're going to be talking about TikTok. And even if you don't think that you're interested in TikTok at all, please stick around because she is doing something wildly amazing with TikTok. So uh, stick around. So that is coming up. <laughs> You're going to love it. She's really the best. Uh, so what's been going on around here in New Zealand? Um, feels like so much, all of it good. Uh, writing is going really well. And y'all, I know I, I know I pushed this last week, um, but my friend Mona McDermott just had a podcast launch called Ease Lessons. And um, she is working with four people over the course of three months for each cycle of the podcast. So she's got four writers right now and she talks to them once a month and she kind of coaches us through some stuff that we've been struggling with. I have done two episodes with her. They're both released now and um, they're kind of, I'm not exaggerating life-changing and I was scared to listen to them because I don't really like to listen to myself ever on any medium or platform, which is hard when you record your own audio books, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but just this afternoon, I listened to the first episode that I had with her as I was walking back from the grocery store and I was crying, walking up the hill, listening to, uh, the revelations I've been having about the book I've been working on. So if you want to hear me, um, a lot of you tell me that you love the intro section of the show, or I'm just usually babbling about what's going on around here. Uh, there's less babble on her show, but really deeply into um, my my deep persona and my fears and my worries about writing this particular book. And I think you might enjoy it. So I'm going to encourage you to go listen to Mona. Be brilliant on her podcast, Ease Lessons, where you can, you can get those anywhere you like. So um, I have been working on the book that I'm talking about with Mona in that on that show and it's going well. It's, it's right now called Stay, um, not Replenish anymore. And I mentioned I hired the developmental editor. Uh, that's at the, I need to get my book to her by the end of January. And just today I reached out to hire my copy editor because I need concrete things in place to make me do the work. And um, this is a, a wonderful way for me to get that done. So uh, that's awesome. And it's going well. Also, 90 days to done and 90 day revision started just yesterday. And the classes, as usual, are magic. I'm really, really happy with the way these particular groups of people have come together. And uh, there's this wonderful thing that happens when I hold the first day of class, especially for 90 days to done, especially when people haven't worked with me before. They arrive to the Zoom room class and I can see the nervousness and I can feel it. Um, and they look at this room full of strangers and think, what the hell am I doing here? I can't do this. I'm not gonna, I can't write this book. Do I even want to? Who are these strangers? I don't like any of them. None of them are gonna understand me. And I have this crystal ball. And I know with 100% certainty that on the last day of class, people will cry because they don't want to leave their friends. And they will be so tight and bonded and they will be so proud of the work that their peers have done in this class. And they will be just as proud of the work that they have done in the class. So um, it's also a nerve wracking day for me. I, sometimes I don't sleep the night before. I don't know why I just get really nervous about the first day of class. And I did that this time, um, but it was just beautiful. So that was awesome. I'm just realizing as I'm talking without preparation, as often happens on the show that usually on the first episode of the year, I talk about money. I am not ready to do that because I have not put together. Um, I have not even looked at the charts that my assistant Ed has sent me about money. So that's going to be next week. I just realized that. So I apologize for that. If you are tuning in eagerly to find out how much money I made and where I made it, um, that will be on next week's show. I can almost guarantee it. I know that he has pulled all of the information for me together. I just haven't really got it together to look at it because I've been doing things like writing and opening classes and completely forgetting about that. So I apologize. Uh, I think that that is all the news that's fit to print, except I will tell you that I went swimming in the sea twice this week, something that I have been scared of doing, something that I had done in the Bay Area in a wetsuit. But honestly, I had never swum. I had 
flapped about. It's hard to swim in a wetsuit and it's very hard to swim in a wetsuit when it is that incredibly cold as the San Francisco Bay water is. So I had gone in and flapped about and kind of squealed and swam a few strokes and then stopped and looked around. And uh, so on Tuesday, I guess it was, no, I guess it was on Monday. I went to the beach because it was a gorgeous 80 degree day. And we drove 15 minutes to the beach after work. And I got in the water and my goggles broke. So I didn't really swim. And then the next day, same thing after work, we drove down to the beach, which is even closer, 10 minutes away. And we can actually see it from the front of our house. And I swam, swam, I swam for 30 minutes. I've never swum for 30 minutes in the open water without the edge of a pool to usually at the, at the edge of the pool, I usually stop every four or six lengths and just kind of look around, have a little breath. I don't have to do that. I just swam. It was the most beautiful, wonderful feeling. And there were tons of people in the water and there were kids screaming and jumping off the platforms. And oh, it was, it's, it's heaven. It was heaven. I absolutely love being here. And Wellington's weather is uh, nothing to, nothing to joke about. It is intense a lot of the time, but they say on a good day, they say you can't beat Wellington on a good day. And on a good day, Wellington is absolutely perfect. And so that was a real highlight of my week that I wanted to share with you. Uh, oh, I also wanted to quickly thank new patrons. Thank you to Tyler and to Yvonne Bennett for upping her pledge. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, Dorothea John's daughter also edited her pledge up. Thank you, Dorothea. And um, I'm going to mispronounce this and I apologize. Bjank Elfson which is a beautiful name. Uh, thank you. New patron from Canada. I really, really appreciate you all. If you ever want to support, you can go to patreon.com slash Rachel and look at that. See, um, see what I offer. Let's get into the interview with Eva. You're going to love it. She's so adorable and so fun. And um, I think you're going to be surprised by what we say when we're talking about TikTok. So please enjoy, please get some of your own writing done. Thank you for being here and for listening and for taking your writing seriously enough that you've listened to writing podcasts. And thank you for letting me into your life. I really appreciate it. Okay, my friend, happy writing. Okay, well, I could not be Hi. more pleased today to welcome to the show my friend Ava Moore. Hello. Hi. How are you? I am really well for the first time in a long time. <laughs> I am so glad to hear it. Oh my gosh. So Ava and I go back a long time to romance writer days, um, back of the day, day, back of the day. Um, let me give you a little bit of an introduction for those who might not know you yet. Ava Moore writes sexy contemporary romances featuring compelling characters finding love in the modern world. Pulling up her Chicagoland roots, she has chased adventures around the globe with stints in France and Singapore. Even now lives in California at the wine end, not the movie end, with her college sweetheart and three gorgeous kiddos. She loves hearing from the outside world while she's hiding in her she shed. Are you in there now? I am not. It's a whole long construction story. I will be back in it soon. <laughs> do you love having one? I do. I love having my own space with a lock on the door and the girls know when I'm out there, mommy's off limits. <laughs> it is such a blessing. <laughs> I am very much looking forward to moving into a house. This will probably air months after I move into a house, but you know, move into a house where I can have a door and close it again. Cause it's been like almost, it's been five months without that. It is hard to function without routine when you're in so much transition. It is I so hard to function without routine. Uh, speaking of routine, you know, I love routine and that's what I love, love, love to talk about. So talk to me about what your writing process is like, what that routine is. You also, you do not have to go into anything you don't want to, but you also said that you are good now and that you haven't been good. If you want to touch on any of that or how this affects your writing, let's go, let's do this. Absolutely. Um, uh, pandemics suck. Oh my God. Right. <laughs> News, news flash. Um, I had three children home for close to two years. Oh my God. I'm a former third grade teacher. It was very hard to turn that off. Yes. Of I course. did not write for over a year. Oh, I don't even because doubt it. I was feeding people and keeping them alive and keeping a kindergartner 
focused on Zoom classes. It's, That's it's, a special level of hell. It and really <laughs> is. I have, a, I have a kindergartner friend and they were requiring her to be on Zoom for like six or seven hours a day. It's, it was, I can't do it. It was ridiculous. It was too much. It was too much, but we made it through. We made it through. Everybody's back in school now. Oh. And, and I have, I have control of my time again, which is great. Um, so my routine now has been, um, since the kids went back in September, I've been figuring out where are my windows? How do I get all of my stuff done? And, um, and how old are all of them in terms of where they are? I have a six, a 10 and an almost 13. Oh my God. I don't know how yeah. you get dressed in the morning. Honestly, I, I am in a car driving from two until six on any given day, just getting kids to where they need to be picking wow. them up from school. Yeah. So, so finding my windows and protecting them fiercely yeah. is the only way that I have gotten back into writing. And, um, I know you're a Becca sign person too. Junkie. I'm, yes. I'm a number three responsibility. Oh, see, my responsibility is like dirt low. I don't even know. What does that feel like? Oh, it's intense. <laughs> it is isn't. It's, um, I buy these planners aspirationally because I'm like, oh, I'm going to plan out my day. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do. And then I don't, because if I don't hit that goal, then I feel terrible about mm -hmm. like, oh, mm -hmm. I have, I have shirked my responsibility today. Um, where is your, where I, is your achiever? Um, that's a good question. I want to say it's like a nine. It's yeah. I was guessing your top yeah. 10. <laughs> yeah. It's up there. Oh. It's up there. Um, so, so I found a way to make responsibility work for me. I started this writing club on TikTok and I run a live twice a day, uh, Sunday through Thursday evenings and Monday through Thursday mornings. And I show up because I'm responsible to my people. Oh, yes. I keep my phone quiet. Right. You can't touch I'm it or look at it. And I'm, I'm providing an ASMR experience of just quiet writing for an hour. We do three 20 minute sprints with five minute breaks. Their phones stay quiet because I'm being quiet. So they get their stuff done. We just cleared 2.5 million words written since February. That is, it's unreal. amazing. Okay. It so makes my heart so happy. <laughs> let's talk about this. Let's go into detail because yeah. um, I'm a TikTok junkie. I love it. I love it. Like I can't open it unless I'm willing to give it at least half an hour and usually more. Um, so yes, there's that. Can you please walk us through what that looks like though for the person who probably hasn't been on TikTok, has not taken that plunge yet? Yeah. So TikTok was one of my few joys during the pandemic because yeah, me too. please entertain me in 30 seconds to a minute at a time. Thank you. Right. And then around January, I decided, okay, as I do with most social networks, it is now time for me to give back to the community that has given me so much. Yeah. And so I started creating content. Um, and the TikTok platform is great because you determine what you want to see, what you want to make, what your platform is going to be about. It's all very personal and it's very easy to feed your algorithm. Um, I have book talk. I have writer talk. I have some kink talk. I have crochet talk, which is delightful. I didn't even I know about have, crochet talk. Um, wow. Oh yeah. It's good. It's <laughs> this one woman does it one-handed and I'm, I watch them on repeat to try and figure out how she does it. It's wow. I will send, I'll send it to you. Okay, you are now do. on my list of people. I will send loving TikToks to because That's that is how, one of my love languages. That is my love language now. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as, as an author trying to make it work as a social media platform, um, it's been pretty easy for me to find the, um, the spaces where I fit, right? The, the first video that went viral for me 
was writing advice. And so I started a series of unsolicited writing advice. Nobody's that. asking for this, but I'm going to give it. Um, and that did really well until <laughs> I got distracted because I love, because construction took over my life. Um, and then this late night writers club, that's the hashtag late night writers club, all one word. Mm. If you search it, you'll pull up my lives and any announcements or progress that we've made. Cause I make videos for that too. Um, that came about and now we have a discord and there's 55 writers in there. Oh and on gosh. any given night I'm writing with 10 internet friends and we're all working on different, they're not even all romance, all different genres. Um, Let me, so, so what beautiful. this looks like, because I haven't actually watched too many lives. So what I'm imagining it looks like is, um, is, is, can you see you on the screen? Yes. So you can yes. see you on the screen and you're just looking at your screen for 20 minutes at a time. And then do you look mm -hmm. at the screen 20 minutes in and say, okay, it's time for a break. Will you hold up the clock? I Please. have a gorgeous little timer. It's adorable. Um, I actually got the inspiration for this, um, or the recommendation for it from Casey McQuiston. Red, oh yeah. Red, white, and royal blue. Mm -hmm. So she talks about how she writes with ADHD and she's like the time timer. It's very uniquely named the time timer. Um, it's silent. So it doesn't tick and distract you. Um, here, we turn off the, you can choose whether you wanted to have an alarm or not, but the time representation is visual. Oh, I have. So seen anybody watching this. me can see, can watch the clock go down and know how much time they have left. Um, and I am the keeper of the clock. So they don't have to worry. They just put their head down and write. Right. And then when the beeper goes off, we take five minutes, we chat, I answer questions. Yeah. Um, they are typing the questions in and yeah. I am responding. So I'm the only one that can be seen on camera. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, Which is good because I know this you is are, a visual you, thing. I'm gonna you, show you, you this is the view. This, yeah. So you see- Oh, okay. So could you describe this for the podcast listeners? Because a lot absolutely. of them will just it. You get, you get a view of the timer and then my laptop sits here. And then we have um, inspirational saint candles. Currently we are enjoying the Roy Kent saint <laughs> candle. Um, we also have uh, Saint Rebecca for when we need bad boss bitch energy. These are uh, Ted Lasso um, candles for those listening. And, and the Rose family from Schitt's Creek. That, so, I, that's, that is. That's, my, that's my favorite Rose right there, yes. <laughs> Yes, David, David is the best. Oh my gosh, that is so, so, so cool. Now, how are you keeping track of these hours? You have 2.5 million hours written, which is- 2.5 million words. Words, 2, sorry. 2,000, 2,000, like 400 words. hours. Honestly, I'm more impressed with 2.5 million words. That yeah. is, how do you have, are you keeping like a Google spreadsheet going or how do you track that? So at the, at the end of the sprints, I say, give me your totals. And you're allowed to share what you got done during our hour. Yeah. You're allowed to share what you got done on your own if you couldn't make it to sprints. It's very, I, I'm going to give you an accountability measure and I'm gonna ask you for it. And you're yeah. gonna tell me whatever you're comfortable with. If you edited for three hours and got no words, those three hours count towards our hour goal. Right. If you wrote a novel, in the last time, this happened last night, Zachary Hagen puffed and it was like, hey, I wrote a book. Uh, here's 75,000 words since I was last year. That's fabulous. Yeah. Great. Great. And that's wonderful. And it doesn't, it's, it's a completely artificial goal, mm -hmm. right? Like our last goal was to get to 2000 hours worked together. Before that, it was to get to 2 million words together. And what is the prize? A Zoom party <laughs> where we have cheesecake and dress up in moo's like the Golden Girls or the one coming up this week is a pajama jammy jam. So we can just all come on a Zoom in our jammies. The prizes are ridiculous, but it is motivational enough that people keep showing up. And it's not that they're showing up for me. They're showing up for themselves and they're yeah, showing up for their muse. They're giving their brains that happy space for an hour a day. And God, if that isn't the most powerful thing. You have like, two of I know the most the days, powerful things right there. You have the accountability yeah. plus community. When you have yeah. those two things together, amazing things can happen. And you're going to say, you know, on the days. On the days that I don't write, I, I feel off. 
I oh, don't yeah. feel I'm, I turn great. into a bitch. Oh, I'm horrible. I am, I am not a good mama on those <laughs> days at all. And I, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have a husband who understands that the woman he married has a brain and she needs to use it on more than meal planning and laundry. Yeah. And so, um, he very kindly takes over the bedtime routine on the nights that I sprint at eight o'clock so that I can be out here and do my thing and get that time in my head so that I feel like a human being again. Yeah. It's so good. So, and how do people find you just algorithmically on the TikTok, on the tickety talk? On the tickety talk. If you, if you search late night writers club, I'm the only one posting to that hashtag. So yeah. that'll take you to my feed. Yeah. If you search the number four and then Eva more forever more. Oh yes. I love that. I love that. It's also my, web, <laughs> it's also my webpage. Um, that, that is what I tag a lot of my videos with. Um, if you search at author Eva Moore on almost all the platforms, that's, that's me. So that'll take what, you directly to my page. What happens on the, the times where you just don't want to, where you're just like, oh my God, I cannot, I cannot. I cannot. See, this is where the hours come in handy. There are days where the words are not there yeah. and the story is not there. Or for example, I just got copy edits back. Oh yeah. I'm not, I'm not writing. Yeah. I'm accepting paragraphs and commas and M dashes, which I apparently don't know how to use appropriately. I don't know how to use a comma for the life of me. So whatever. <laughs> this is why I pay this wonderful woman exactly. good money to tell me I've used the word hand eight times in one paragraph. She's, she's wonderful. <laughs> Mine is, but mine is always, but <laughs> <laughs> it's and or, but yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, so I'm still showing up at the time. I'm still setting the timer. I'm doing something for my career, mm -hmm. whether it's edits, whether it's sending the emails for marketing stuff that I meant to send two weeks ago and didn't. Um, right. I'm also playing with designing my own covers, the illustrated covers. Oh, fun. Um, and so, so in between my, in between my edits, that's what I've been doing on my iPad. And I'll just sit here and I'll color for the 20 minutes of the sprint. And because it's something that I'm doing for my my business, yeah. I can count the hour. And the thing, and there's something so magical about just showing up to do it. I have a, um, I have a group called Rachel says, right. And for two hours on Mondays and Wednesday evenings in the U S um, we get together on, we just actually, we just got off. Uh, we get together and we write in this room and I could show up and I could pull up Twitter on my computer. No one's looking at my screen. We're all looking at our own screens. Um, and I could look at Twitter. I could do, I could look at Facebook all, the whole time, but I never do. I always work. Um, because that feeling of accountability is there, you know, I always do something work related. And it's awesome, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. Best. And like even if even if it's not getting your words for the day, even just saying this is the time that I am setting aside for myself to do this one very specific yeah. thing work on this passion project that I love. Right. And the, like, this is the beauty of the Pomodoro sprints too, right? I can oh do anything God, for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I can do anything for 20 minutes yep. and it doesn't have to be longer. We, we actually tested which sprint length worked best for our group. Oh, cool. We did some at 20, 25, 30, 45. And they were like 20. <laughs> I need, I need to get up. I need to talk. I need to move 20. I'm like, all right. And that's what we do. We do three of them and that's an hour. Um, but you're right. There's, there's something magical about knowing that there's a space and a time coming in your day where all of your focus is going to be on your writing. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that lets me focus on who needs to be where, when, and did I get the grocery shopping done? And does the laundry yeah. move through or am I washing it again? You know, yeah. because I don't, I'm not trying to split my focus. I have a time for this. And then I have a time for my writing. And you have accountability and community. And that is just so, so, so cool. Okay. I'm going to try to join you at some point. I really want to do that. I think that will be so fun. So other people should look into that too, people. And yours is free, right? Oh yeah. It's I, charge, free. I charge $39 a month for mine. People go, go is... see Eva. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is, this is the only thing that has gotten me writing again. Yeah. And so I'm just so grateful other people show up so that I make time to show up for myself. That's like, it, it, we're even, we're square. It's great. Um, so, the, so the times are 
Sunday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Pacific, mm -hmm. and then Monday through Thursday, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. So that's a total of, I don't know, like nine hours a week that you're doing. Is that right? Sure. That's math. Know. Let's go with that. Nine or 10. Mm -hmm. That's great. Sounds good. <laughs> that's amazing. That is so freaking cool. I'm so glad that you told us about this. And, and that's I also wanna... part of the balance for me is that yeah. like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning, that's full on kid time, right? Yeah. That's weekends, that's travel, that's, you know, yeah. that's when my kids need me to be present. And because I know I've put in my investment earlier in the week, I can say I'm off. I'm offline. I won't be here. I will see you Sunday night. And that has given my family a whole lot more peace around mommy working. Do you manage to keep them out of the way when you're doing it, when you're in the house? Oh, good. So, good. so the construction project that we did, we built um, an ADU in the backyard. It's like a one bedroom condo. And so Ooh. I just come out here. Oh, Lovely. It's so it's almost completely like a separate. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. The she shed had to get taken down to the studs during the permitting process. Wow. We are in the process of putting it all back now that we're past permits. And it's been a whole, Ooh, it's been a whole sounds, thing. So that sounds my fun. office is currently in boxes in my family room. And I'm working with um, like two notebooks and my iPad. <laughs> You know, I, my, uh, my, my own office has been stripped back for these five months. Right. And, it, but, at, and right now I'm at, at the dining table of this Airbnb where we eat and every night for months, I have to put everything away and I just have a little pile of work stuff and it's really all I need. It's kind of, I kind of love putting my office away at night. That feels really good. Um, let's talk about writing. Can you yes. like on a, on a craft level, can you share a craft tip of any sort with us? Absolutely. I'm going to share the one from the video that went viral. Oh, yes, um, please. So in, in copy edits, in traditional publishing, there's this thing called TK. Mm -hmm. Why it's TK, I don't know, but it means to come, right? It means right. like, this I've, is coming, right. keep a space for it. Like, I haven't figured it out TK yet. TK dedication. Yeah. It'll, there will be one here, right? Um, I had a friend who turned me on to this, who said, use it as an editing, use it as a writing tool. So as you're writing your first draft, when you're in the flow and you don't want to research, what is this term in winemaking? TK wine term, write it all as one word, start with TK and keep like, keep it as a chunk. Ah. And then when you're done with your first draft, you search TK. And they all because pop up. Unless you're writing a story, am I allowed to swear? Yes. Unless you're writing a story about shit kicking lot keys with pocket knives, there are very few TKs in the <laughs> English language. Um, and I so thought, I've tried to, up I've tried to think about where TKs live and I've never come up with even one of those three. So thank you. Yeah, those are not usually in my books. You can <laughs> thank the comment section under that video. Like, no, no, you are wrong. There are TKs. And I'm like, okay, quit throwing portmanteau and Yiddish at me, okay? <laughs> That Anyhow, is a brilliant tip. So, so now I, I do recommend that you use them sparingly. Otherwise, future Eva will be very upset with you that you then have to go back and fix all of these things. But it's a great way to like call it out. I, I've had some people say like, oh, I highlight it. And then I go back and I'm like, when I'm scrolling through 80,000 words, oh yeah, that's a lot of highlights that are easy to yeah. miss. I would rather search TK and have a list. Of all I do. The spots I need to go back and find things. I do something very similar. I just use the asterisk because that's not going to naturally occur in my manuscript. But I have to say, in terms of fun, in terms of levels of fun, TK is way more fun, and I'm going to start <laughs> using that because I want to see this list of words pop up. And I like how you keep it all together. TK wine term, you know, that is right? so cool, Eva. TK oh sex scene. I've used that one before too. Yeah, and it'll come later. <laughs> <laughs> after after a couple glasses of wine is the way I used to do it. Yes, exactly. Pun intended. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I was actually just copy editing a sex scene uh, like 10 minutes ago on Zoom in front of everybody. I'm like, am I am I blushing? <sighs> All right. What, <laughs> what thing in your life affects your writing in a surprising way? Um the first thing that I would say is TikTok. Yeah. Um, which shocker, how, how did this time suck app impact my writing so much? It changed your life. It did. Oh. Um, 
But I think the other thing that really impacts my writing is routine. When I'm able to carve out a routine, even if the routine is one hour, mm -hmm. I, my origin story as a writer, right, is that I was struggling. We had just moved to California. I had no family around. I had an infant and a toddler. I was potty training and nursing at the same time, losing my mind. It was all kinds of bad. And the story idea came to me. It wouldn't leave. It wouldn't leave. Gosh, I'm just going to write it down to get it out of my head so I can sleep because I need to sleep. And then I got it on the paper and I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. Maybe I'll just play with it. My oldest kid went to preschool and two mornings a week, one morning I had to be there. And one morning I had a sitter for the baby and a kid at preschool. Mm -hmm. I had four hours a week that were mine. And I didn't, I said, I'm not using any of this for chores or no grocery groceries shopping. Or, yeah. And yeah. I will take the children to the grocery store. That is how much I need some time alone in my own head. And in four hours on Thursday mornings, hiding at Pete's coffee shop from September to June, I wrote my first novel. Oh. So it's like, if I can just find that one slice of routine, that one slice that I can make consistently mine then I know I can handle all the rest of it. That so, is routine. Beautiful. Swear by it. I, I also swear by it, even though my responsibility is very low. I think it's my uh, achiever that gets me there in terms of the Clifton strengths. Um, I once wrote a book at Pete's. I wrote a couple of books at Pete's and I loved how um, my lap stop started, uh, started smelling like coffee. When I would open it, <laughs> the odor would float out and it would make me feel inspired to write. It was it was the best. I love that. Anytime um, that I have a black Thai coffee oh, with like the little like sweet and condensed cream at the bottom, not, like yeah. that is like directly wired to my creative center. I don't know. Oh, it's caffeine it's and sugar in intense amounts. And it's so delicious. I don't like to mix it up either. I like to like, oh, I, I've you seen need, people you need like the pure sip. Of I want the sweet. The, exactly. I've seen people mix it until it's just real sweet coffee. I, that's ridiculous. No, it just needs to be sitting silly. on the bottom. <laughs> that's just silly. You need like the bitter espresso and then the sweetened condensed milk. Okay, I'm alternating. Jonesing, jonesing for that right now. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, speaking of books, what is the best book that you have read recently and why did you love it? I just zoomed through um, His Leading Lady by Ooh. Jenny Nordback. Oh, I don't know her. Oh, she's one of the hosts of the Wicked Wallflowers podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, That's why her name is vaguely familiar, but I haven't read her. So this is her debut. <gasps> it's her, she's, she wrote, she wrote a memoir first called The Scarlet Letters of her time as a dominatrix in an LA club. That's, that's where I know her name from. Yeah. And then this is her first romance. It is outstanding. Really? It's, it's a gorgeous, <sighs> how I, there's so many people, like the conflict is spot on. It's a wonderful look at um, BDSM dumb culture from an insider's perspective that really gets the nuance mm. and the, the, the details around like power and consent and how important it all is. There's a Me Too Hollywood theme. The, so the basic story is he's a Hollywood leading man who has basically landed the role of Christian Grey and nobody believes he can nail it, right? And so he hires her. That's a great to concept. Be, to be his coach. Yeah. Since I she's like that. the top dominatrix in LA. But as no it one were, can know that they're together. So fake dating so that there's a reason for them to be seen <sighs> together because no one can know that he's hired her because he'll get dropped from the film, right? And then it's this beautiful exploration of their sexuality and power dynamics in Hollywood. And, and Jenny's voice is just, it's just beautiful. It's so, it's so lyrical and lovely as she takes you through this world. I read it in one sitting. I don't, ha I don't ever read a book in one sitting. I mom. started yeah. it at 7.30 and finished at two, because of course I, because good Carl, choices were made. That's all I'm going to say. Good choices were made. Um, <laughs> that sounds it was, it was so excellent. awesome. Okay. Yeah, that is really, flying really 
to the top of my TBR pile. Um, and also let's talk about TBR piles. Can you tell our listeners about your most recent release, what should go at the top of their TBR pile? So like I said, I have not written anything in two years. That's okay. I do have a release coming out in December, January, and I'm oh, very excited. Oh, this show will probably be out by then because I'm so far ahead. So the book that just came out for listeners to go look for is? Is called Reclaimed Dreams. Um, I just finished a series. This Well, I thought I was done, but I wasn't. Um, I wrote a series set in an HGTV style reality show. Oh, sign me up. The patriarch has decided that his company is going to be on this show and all of his kids are going to get on board. And all of his kids are like, um, wait a second. They've also lost the oldest son. Um, he went off to war and did not come home. Mm. And so there's this shakeup in the family dynamics of who's running what. He was supposed to take over the company. Everything is topsy-turvy. So the older sister, the younger brother, and the younger sister all got their love stories in opened up, stripped down, and roughed in. And in the background, the parents' marriage is really struggling, um, largely sparked by the loss of their son and how they've both chosen to deal with their grief. And so I wrote it in the background just because it was a plot arc and an emotional family drama, right? Kind of a, yeah. this is us. This is, this is one of yeah, the things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And my readers were like, I need to know they're okay. I need, I need more of their story. I need to know that this ends well. And I'm like, you, I love my readers. I love them. So I started it as a serialized, I'm going to release a chapter. It'll be a cute little novella. And I'm going to tell their story from start to finish. And what it turned into was a full-blown novel, time slipped with the, the current timeline that overlays the three books I already wrote. Oh, and cool. then flashbacks to their earlier parts of their marriage. Wow. So you can see where they were and where they are now and how they're working through their grief and eventually how they jointly figure their shit out and get back together and that sounds so moving and so you must have had so much fun writing it it was it was absolutely what my brain needed it was so um the first draft my my developmental editor said (laughs) I don't know why they're together like I really don't know why they are together (laughs) none like they should absolutely break up. And I was like, perhaps I have channeled a bit too much of being stuck in the same house of my husband for two years into this novel. Um. (laughs) And that folks is why we have editors Uh, because we can't see, we can't see that stuff. And so, so I was, I was blessed to go on a writer's retreat with my editor. She was there, she came up from LA and I was like, okay, we're going to figure this out. Cause she said time slip. And all of a sudden my brain was like, oh, of course, of course that's what it was. Cause I had done it chronologically and it wasn't gelling and I couldn't <sighs> figure it out. And then she said that, and I shuffled everything, figured out the 16 new scenes I needed to write, turned it around in a month off to copy. So um, it, it really came together. The marriage redemption arc means a lot to me. Um, it's, it's older hero and heroine. Mm -hmm. It's they're in their sixties and they're trying Mm -hmm. to retire and the conflicts one wants to, and the other can't let go of control. And how do you navigate that? Um, there's a lovely romantic scene in the vineyards because I don't think older love gets represented enough in romance. That is so fantastic Um, tell me the name again reclaiming reclaimed dreams reclaimed dreams that is beautiful Mm -hmm. and that is out right now as you all are listening i know that i am going to pick it up and put it at the top of my tbr pile eva where can well you've already told us but tell us again we can find you at author even more even more places most places that's me on facebook that's me on tiktok that's me on instagram it's me on twitter but i'm not a tweeter that's yeah, not, well, you know what? Twitter, I, I don't think Twitter sells books. You know, it might sell a book every once in a while, but you know what sells books is TikTok. 
How many books have I bought because of BookTok? I can't even tell you. Can't paperbacks. Even tell you. Yeah. TikTok sells paperbacks. Yes. There was it this great, wild. I don't know if you listened to this podcast called um, I see in case you, I see why am I in case you missed it. Um, but they talk about pop culture and they talk about TikTok. And they they did this thing where they called bookstores to ask what influence has TikTok had on your on your store? And they're all like, oh my God, oh my God. These are the books we sell. We can't keep them in the store. We know when it hits book talk. We know, we know. Um, and the number of indie tremendous. booksellers who are on TikTok yes. making content about their I stores, follow them. It's brilliant. I, it's I wonderful. They're doing such a good job. It's As great. are you, my friend. Thank you. I'm hoping to see you at a live. I'm going to go look at your calendar, my calendar, and try to mesh it and put something on my calendar because it would be really fun just to show up. I'm so. hoping to come visit you in New Zealand at some point. Please. I was there with the kiddos when they were three and five and the little one has never been and I am dying to go back. So as soon as things open up again, it's on my list. Well, we are going to be in Wellington. Come see us. I'm serious. All right. I will. It's been Absolutely. so nice talking to you and seeing you and hearing what you're up to. Thank you so, so much for being on the show.